authors and readers keep doing your love and at the humble service of truth blessed be the lord fascinating power of dialogue drama music and visual blessed be the lord our god guide oh lord producers directors actors and audiences towards all that is true and good that celebrates life and love of god blessed be the lord our god blessed be the lord our god for our sister radio who walks on the wings of the wind and makes the earth seem small blessed be the lord our god we pray for all radio stations and transmitters may this gift of god and work of humans be used for the freedom and growth and brother will of all your children blessed be the lord our god praise be to you lord for television may this pulpit in the heart of every home no disturbed in christ how many in family and prepare a people guided by gospel values blessed be the lord our god praise be to you lord god for email and internet cd fax cell phone and all the powerful means for the service of humanity and your kingdom may they sing your praise and glory amen blessed be the lord our god blessed be the lord our god we shall begin with a reading taken from james letter chapter 1 verses 21 to 25 welcome the word which has been planted in you and has the power to save you be doers of the word and not just hearers lest you deceive yourselves The hearer who does not become a doer is like someone who looks at the mirror he looks and then promptly forgets what he was like but he who fixes his gaze on the perfect law of freedom and holds on to it not forgetting what he has heard but acting on it will be blessed in what he does my dear brothers and sisters today we the members of the pauline family start the tridum in preparation for the celebration of the feast of 
our founder, Professor James Alberione. During these three days, I'll be sharing a few thoughts on Father Alberione and Word of God. And this theme is suggested in view of the Bible year that we are going to begin on 26th November 2020. And today on the first day of Tridum, the topic of our reflection is the Word of God in the life of Father Alberione. The reading that we have listened reveals the importance of being doers of God's word and not mere hearers of it. Jesus, through his preaching and teaching, reiterated the importance of being doers of God's word. Jesus said, it is not he who calls me Lord, Lord, who will enter the kingdom of God, but the one who does the will of God, that is the one who listens to the word and obeys it. Jesus said, my mother, my brothers and sisters are those who listen to the word and obey it. Jesus reiterated the importance of being doers of God's word, not only through his preaching and teaching, but mainly through his life. Jesus lived a life of obedience. He did always the will of God. In fact, Father Alberione summarized the life of Jesus as the one who always did the will of God. And Father Alberione himself was a man who lived by the word. He was a man who made the gospel, that is the word, the supreme law of his life. First of all, I would say that Father Alberione was a man who believed in the power of word. St. Paul, in his letter to the Romans, chapter 1, verse 16, he says, what is the gospel, what is the word? It is the power of God for those who believe. Alberiona believed that the word has the power to elevate human mind. He believed that the word has the power to transform human beings. He believed that the presence of the word is the presence of God that is invisible power in us. He was convinced that the power is able to resist us in moments of temptations. It is able to free us from our sins. Such is the power of the word of God. And he believed in this power. As a practical step, he used to always carry the Bible with him or the word of God with him. It is said that during the initial years of his priesthood, for 32 years he used to carry the gospel in the cassock, in the pocket of the uh, cassock. And he felt a special efficacy because of the presence of the word. And all his preachings, all his writings, teaching, everything was marked by the presence of the word. And through this, he felt a special efficacy. Because of the presence of God's word, he felt a, spe a special efficacy in his uh, um, preaching. So, first of all, he believed in the power of God's word. Secondly, he was a man who loved the word of God. And for Alberione, love does not mean expressing something in words, but expressing in action. He was a man of action. We don't have to say about anything about it. We know it. He was a man of action. He was a man of initiative. He was a man of enthusiasm. He was a man of creativity. And the number of initiatives he carried out in favor of the word of God, I would say, is innumerable. Thirdly, he was a man who read the word of God. Not only who exhorted, the word of, exhorted to read the word of God, on the contrary, he was a man who read the word of God in his personal life. He used to say that his admiration for St. Paul, how did it come about? It is because of his reading of the 
uh, especially the letter to the Romans. And he was familiar with the gospel and also the letters of St. Paul. He felt at home with the word of God. He was so familiar that at times he used to uh, connect one verse from one letter of Paul to another um, verse from another letter as if it is one verse from one letter. It was the familiarity. It was the way he felt at home with the word of God. And therefore, Alberione was a man who not only exhorted to read the word, but also a person who really read the word in his personal life. Fourthly, he was a person who really drew inspiration from the word of God. Each verse of the Bible inspired him. And especially the words which we have inscribed at the altar here. Fear not, I am with you. From here I want to enlighten you. Be sorry for sins. He made this words a program of life for himself and for others. And it happened, or he heard these words from the Lord during the difficult years of his life, especially in 1923. That was the time when he was really suffering, I would say, a moral suffering as well as physical suffering. What physical suffering? Physical suffering because he had a continuous sore throat. Physical suffering because his stomach would not accept many of the food items. Physical suffering because the doctors who examined him said that he would not survive more than 18 months because of tuberculosis. Physical suffering. And what about the moral suffering? Moral suffering is the thought about the future of the congregation. That is, he is bringing more and more boys and girls around him and then halfway abandoning them because he would not survive longer. This thought, moral suffering. Another moral suffering, the abandoning or the leaving of vocations. Yet another moral suffering, the death of his mother, which took place in June 1923. Perhaps the only connection that he had with his family members. So during these moments of difficulties, he heard the vo voice of the Lord telling him in a dream, Fear not, I am with you. From here I want to enlighten you. Be sorry for sins. As I have said, he has made it a program of life for himself and he has made it a program of life for his spiritual children. The one who propagated it especially is that of uh, our uh, father Jacardo, who wanted that it be inscribed at the altar is Jacardo. So father Alberione was a man who drew inspiration from the word. And finally, most importantly, he was a man, I would say, who lived the word of God. He was not only a hearer of the God's word, but also a doer of God's word. He was transformed by God's word. He conformed himself more to God's word. And what is the spirituality that he transmitted? That we become more and more Christ-like. And the most important advice of Alberione about the word of God is this, that each one of us reproduce the Bible history, the salvation history in our life, personal life. In other words, we leave the word. And again, we have innumerable instances which uh, portray Alberione as a man who lived by the word. The word exhorts us to um, multiply the talents that we have received. Alberione was a man who multiplied the talents. He was a faithful administrator. He received the talent of Pauline charism and he multiplied it. And if we are here today as members of the Pauline family, it is because Father Alberione multiplied that talent, the Pauline charism that he received. He was a man of faith. The, um, um, the word says, if you have a faith as large as a mustard seed, you will tell this mountain to move from here to there, and the mountain would obey. And this aspect of faith is very much seen in the life of Alberione. If he were to start the Pauline family, it is because he was a man of faith. We know that he had nothing, no means, in order to start not only the Pauline family, all the, undertakings, all the undertakings that he started only because of faith. No money. 
He also said that when he was a diocesan priest, he used to carry always a purse with him. But when he became a founder, when he needed more money, he abandoned the purse and told the Lord, Lord, send us what is necessary. Again, the words, the Bible, the word is inviting us to be people of faith, to trust in divine providence. Alberion, I was a man who trusted in divine providence. The prayer that we pray almost every day, the, the secret of success, the pact, what is that? That is an expression of his trust. That is an expression of our trust in God. Alberion knew the great mission that was entrusted to him. He also knew the capacity of the people around him, that is his own spiritual children. They were incapable, insufficient, ignorant in everything. But in order to fulfill this mission, he wanted people who were holier or more prepared, more educated, more intelligent. And therefore, he is making a pact. He is making a promise. He is, making a, he is entering into a contract with the Lord. And the contract is that, Lord, give us the grace so that we may be able to accomplish in one hour what others are able to accomplish in four hours or five hours or ten hours. And his multiplication is different for spiritual, uh, different for work, sanity, uh, study, um, material assets, and so on. It goes from one is to four up to one is to uh, ten. All expression of his trust. And finally, I would say that the word is exhorting us to be a person of prayer, or persons of prayer. And Alberione was a man of prayer. We don't need any explanation about that. In other words, he lived by the word. And today, my dear brothers and sisters, we are once again invited to deepen our knowledge about Father Alberione's association with the word of God, how he lived a life in obedience to the word. At the same time, we are also invited not only to be hearers of God, God's word, but more importantly, essentially, primarily, to be the words of God's word. to the Holy Spirit, 
both now and Jesus, Master, we praise and thank you for the gift of James Alberione, our Father and model in sanctity and apostle. My soul glorifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. He looks on his servant in loneliness. Henceforth all ages will call me blessed. The Almighty works marvels for me. Holy His name. His mercy is from age to age on those who fear Him. He puts forth His arm in strength and scatters the proud hearted. He casts the mighty from the thrones and raises the lowly. He fills the starving with good things, sends the rich away empty. He protects Israel, his servant, remembering his mercy. The mercy promised to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and forever. Amen. Jesus, Master, the way, the truth, and the life. Show us the way of your truth and sanctity. Almighty and eternal God, you deign to send your only begotten Son as the teacher of the world. Mercifully grant that being full with this doctrine, we may understand better the divine truth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Down in a door, rich and falling, Lord, the sacred host we hail. Lower ancient forms departing, newer rites of grace prevail. Faith for all defects supplying, where the feeble senses fail. To the everlasting Father and the Son who reigns on high, with the Proceeding forth from each eternally, be salvation on a blessing, might and endless majesty.
let us pray. O oh God, in this wonderful sacrament, you have left us a memorial of your passion. Grant us the great so to reverence the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may continually find in our souls the fruit of your redemption. You live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As, As it was, was the in the beginning, beginning is now, now and, and ever, ever shall, shall be, world, world without, without end. Amen. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As, As it was, was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As, As it was, was in the beginning, beginning is now, and ever, ever shall be, world without end. Amen. What thanks, O Lord, can I render thee For all the gifts thou hast showered on me Each day I sing of thy praise and glory Hallelujah, hallelujah Give thanks to the Lord upon the heart with a ten string lord sing him songs oh sing him a song that is new play loudly with all your skill what thanks O lord can i render thee for all the gifts thou hast showered on me each day I sing of thy praise and glory. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Jesus, Master, the way, the truth, and the life. Have mercy on us. Queen of Apostles. Pray for us. Saint Paul the Apostle. Pray for us. Blessed James Alberione. Pray for us. From all sin. Deliver us, Lord. In the name of the Father, Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.